and let us all that we can to build a better future. With that being said, let's get started with our first segment of the day. So, um, I kind of briefly hinted at this on yesterday's show when Howard Stern was making the announcement that he's going to run for president in 2024, even though it's a bunch of BS. And I played a video uh, about that we played five months ago where Tucker Carlson and Jimmy Dore were calling out the hypocrisy of Howard Stern, especially when he's saying that anyone who's unvaccinated should be pushed away from a hospital. And then I pulled up this one article and I said, I'm not going to read it because it's full of crap. And it is. And it was from CNN's Chris Cicilla, who wrote why there's now a whisper of Hillary Clinton 2024. Daniel, we're living in 2016 actually, all over again. I talked to Chris myself in yeah. person, and he said he would prefer to use his pronunciation for his name, which is uh, just uh, Chris Cicada. Because oh, okay. he makes a lot of noise in the background, and yeah. it kind of gets annoying. So let's find out what's going on. So this is an article from the New York Post. CNN editor-at-large Chris Cicilla was roasted online by critics from both the left and the right after he posted a story suggesting that Hillary Clinton, the one who lost to a reality TV show clown and also lost to Barack Obama as well, uh, could mount a run for president in 2024 in light of the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. And by the way, um, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton, also another person who denied an election. Oh, wait, she has never conceded the 2016 election. One other thing, too. Didn't she have, like, a pro-lifer as VP, Democrat, Tim Kaine? Am I wrong, or am I just forgetting history, Daniel? Well, if you uh, listen to CNN, you're uh, a terrible person for bringing that up, even though it is actually accurate. Mm -hmm. True. So, Cecilia on Tuesday linked to an article he published on CNN's website, The Whispers. The Whispers. The Whispers. You know why they call it The Whispers? Because no one can hear it. Yes. Of Clinton 2024. And he also tweeted it out saying, now is her moment. So, like, it's her turn. I'm with her. How about I'm with us? How about you doing I'm with you? Have, you know I don't, what? I'm, I'm going to play a real big brain inside the Beltway response that wouldn't work for us, but I think it's funny if you think about it. Chris, why don't you want the uh, the vice president? She's also a woman. Chris Silla, are you what? being racist? Yeah. Are you being racist? That's racist. That's uh, cicadist. Yes, he is. He's being cicadist there right there. So Cecilia was quoting a conservative writer, John Illes, who wrote an article predicting that Clinton could, would make a political comeback in light of Friday's abortion ruling. But Nancy and Obama never did anything about Roe v. Wade back then. And, and it's like, they're not gonna, what do you think Hill Dog's going to do now? Oh, if, what is it? If he's literally using the argument... Yes, but she woman. This woman argument. Also, women have very small uh, attention spans and focus. They only care about this. The Nancy Pelosi says that we're going to move past this. It's very picky choosy. I just remembered something. I'll go back to the article. But I remembered something. When we were starting off Hard Lens Media and we were like, looking at videos from the 2016 uh, primary, there was one video that caused you to have like a physical reaction like, <laughs> yeah. and it, 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 it was it was heard like it was a video of like a, a, a bottle of juice or water or something it's like i'm just chilling in this i i forget what it was i don't I must no 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 I'll, I'll, I'll have to find it but i remember when you looked at it, it was like what's wrong says, this video is very disturbing <laughs> i i must have blocked it from my mind i'll i'll find it again and I'll show it to you again when, when you have time. So there you go. Daniel's been working on a lot of stuff here at the studio. So continuing on, CNN analysis conceded that the smart gamble, the big brain, <laughs> that Clinton doesn't run again, though he wondered if Friday's dramatic Supreme Court ruling changed her calculus somewhat as she looks to her own future. She's had her time. She's an old bag now. There we go. And quote me on that. All right. There's growing sense amongst the Democratic operatives that the combination of the 79-year-old President Joe Biden's advanced age, Vice President Kamala Harris's unpopularity, and the nation's struggling econ economy makes the president particularly vulnerable in 2024, according to reports. So let's just focus on this little t tweet By right the way, there. Do you remember in 2020 when everyone was saying Bernie Sanders couldn't win, and they're like, Joe Biden can easily do four years, and already we're like, no. He can't. He can barely do four years. He's having a lot of trouble. Mm. We need someone else in there. Someone who's not going to fix the stuff. Just someone else. So there's a lot to take away from not only that CNN article, but even from this article from the New York Post. And I want to pull this video up. But to your point, Daniel, and I'm glad you brought it up earlier in the in this segment. 
Clinton has never let go of 2016, just like similar how Trump has never let go of 2020. Like all these politicians, they just don't let go of anything. But remember, when Democrats do it, it's fine and reasonable and well thought out and understandable with their frustration. Mm. When Republicans do it, it's uh, it's it's something that you can't even accept as a, as no one can reasonably even say that in our presence. And then you go to Fox News and the exact opposite argument is occurring. True. Now, I want to pull up this video. Now, Jimmy Dore played this on his show as well. It had to deal with the fact that you have Democratic lawmakers not letting go. Now, Chris Christie, in this rare moment, is going to be somewhat reasonable where he'll be saying things that I agree with, with that. that. Yeah. However, again, this is corporate media, so let's take it with a grain of salt. Let's play this video because, obviously, the Democrats, Clinton, and corporate media has never let go of 2016 as a whole. Let's play it. I hope lots of people across the country see and absorb. That's the question, Governor Christie, because you're well aware there are Republicans in this country right now uh, running campaigns right now based on what they said was a faulty election. In fact, there are Republican candidates in Texas saying uh, that President Biden is not the legitimate president, that he's the acting president. Well, look, David, this, this goes all the way back to 2000 with George W. Bush when you had supporters of Al Gore who, even after Vice President Gore conceded the election and certified it himself um, as the president of the Senate, refused to accept George W. Bush as legitimate. You've had Hillary Clinton say that she still doesn't accept the 2016 election results as legitimate. This is a very dangerous thing in this country, which was brought to a new level in 2020. But by I do Donald have to, I Trump. Have to pause right there. Okay, I'm gonna summarize what I heard before he responds. I heard, um, Chris Christie say, okay, I'm, I, I finished closing down that beach in uh, New Jersey. Now I'm here. <laughs> um, this was a thing that happened in 2000 when George Bush ran. And then it got worse when, uh, Hillary Clinton lost. And then it got worse when, uh, Trump lost. And now it's coming to a head. So I hear, hey, this is a ongoing, growing situation that is getting worse over the last 20-ish years. That's what I heard. That's what I took away. I think that's, I think that if you took, uh, if you, you, you can, I think that I hope that no one's about to intentionally pretend that that sentence didn't happen and just pretend it happened a different way because they don't want to accept this interesting duality of uh, results. So let's, uh, let's look at that. Because you also know, Governor, Al Gore stood before the nation and actually conceded uh, and did something very different well, from what we that, witnessed. David. Yeah, Th this is this is much David, different. David, I didn't say Al Gore. D David, let's be clear. Let's remember what I said. Even after Al Gore conceded the election and went before the country in the in the Congress and certified the election as president of the Senate, there were still many of his supporters around the country who did not believe that he, George W. Bush was legitimate, and in fact voted against certification in the House of Representatives. What I'm saying is this is a disturbing trend and pattern that's been increasing in intensity from 2000 to 2016 yeah. to I, now I, to 2020. I get what you're saying. I just don't want our audience to think that I'm not aware that there isn't a, a real equivalency here when you have oh, a, look a this, former president. Right there. Ah. He's literally saying on air, yeah. very clearly, he's Oh man, this is crazy. So he's okay. So first of all, he's literally he's intentionally ignoring. I hate again. I hate when I'm put in this position. I have to agree with Chris Christie on this. Chris Christie's making a very fair set of points that are factually valid, and the host is going. I have to intentionally not take in the reality of the world and facts so that my double speak to the audience can continue. And here he's gonna, he's already saying, hey, I'm trying to tell the audience that these are not similar things. Exponential growth is exponential growth. Mm -hmm. This is something that has been happening. Ironically, the only person who really didn't do it in a big way was, um, it would be like McCain and Romney didn't make a, that big of a deal. They just like, kind yeah. of like, it just kind of went away. Yeah. So ironically, in the last 22 years, the only two people, that have not made a big deal about the election are two Republicans. It's just a very weird way of looking at things. And I guess maybe it goes down to, you know, what we say about Democrats versus Republicans in elections. 
But it's just very interesting to see on TV that the guy can't accept the point, which is, hey, this is a thing that's been happening for a while and it's getting worse. Because Trump has to always be a category unto himself and has to always be Hitler. And if we can't, because again, it's like, here's the thing. It's like, when we talk about Trump, we like make fun of him. I think that's the right way to deal with him. We make fun of most of uh, the people that have run or, or gone into office because we realize that if we deify them as an evil spirit, we're giving them power. Yeah. And if you make Trump the the devil or Hitler, there's no room for nuance, and then you can only fear him and fight him, which ironically is what they're upset about Trump supporters doing. Oh, by the way, see, I'm smiling because I said just before we went live that you like this up, that like this first segment right here. So there you go. So let's continue on with the rest. Just a few more minutes, and we'll be wrapping this segment up with a quite hilarious video because we'll reconnect it to our first article. Who is sowing the uh, the seeds of doubt uh, in this particular election that we're looking uh, well, at? I, I want to bring in Heidi Heitkamp. I do like, want to no, bring in former senator from Bye. North Dakota, ABC News contributor as well. And uh, you were watching this testimony uh, as well, Heidi, along with us. And this Speaker of the House in Arizona, who we have pointed out was a one of the most staunch supporters of the former president, uh, then forced to stand up to him. He talked about his personal uh, diary that he kept, a journal that he kept during this time, the friends he lost, the people that he. No one cares. Um, the lawmakers they had worked with along the way, the, the enormous personal toll, and yet he believes his faith carried him through this. Okay, so no one cares about his faith or whatever. No one cares about January 6th. But the, re the, the uh, thing is, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm saying, ironically, and I think we should always bring this up, if there's one group of people that are the most responsible for Trump coming into existence, it's mainstream media. They are the number one most responsible. They built Trump up in The Apprentice. We have been, I remember when he was a Democrat, all the Democrats thought he was the swellest guy, one of the best donors. Hillary went to his wedding. In fact, it was Democrats who recruited Trump. It's very much such a summary of like everything with Roe versus Wade and everything else that we're dealing with is that Democrats set the seeds and the foundations that the Republicans then build on. And then everyone's like, I don't get how this started. It must have been the Republicans when it's both parties and the media working together to create this conflagration. That, by the way, they hate Trump. They talk about how much they hate Trump. They were never as profitable as when Trump was in office. A couple other things I want to bring up, too, because, again, with that article, because I want to connect it back to CNN. CNN is still promoting Hillary Clinton like they did in 2016 yeah. and 2020. All this time, corporate media has been doing this. All the blue check marks, all the Democratic leaders and people within the establishment trying to promote Hillary Clinton for 2024 because Biden is, what we have said, such an epic failure. Which with, apparently no one on mainstream news understood before he got elected. I was told by the same people that he was going to be great. And how dare you say anything's wrong with him mentally, mm -hmm. even though they were originally the ones that asked in the early primary. So how do we wrap this all up? So first two things. I want to read a YouTube super chat from Mahmoud Murati. So Chris Cecilla said that sleeping emoji. And then number two, look, this is CNN we're talking about. No one respects them. And it's finally given me the opportunity to play this video again because it's funny. Now, of course, it's Fox News covering it. Shout out to Case Study QB. This video is a gem, and I hope to play it again in another future episode of Hard Lens Media because it's funny. Play that video. Everybody knows by now that CNN's hitting rock bottom. Their ratings have hit record lows. Oh, Chris right. Cuomo was fired. Jeff Zucker forced out. Host Brian Stelter's days are numbered, reportedly, and we can see why. The show funny. last week oh, getting all oh, gets better. Fifty-six thousand viewers in the demo. Now, for context, I was going to name shows that rate higher than that, but we don't have time. I'd have to read you the entire TV guide. But when it rains, it pours. Not only has CNN lost viewers, they've lost what little respect they ever had. When CNN approached Republican candidate for Arizona governor, Carrie Lake, things didn't go well. Watch. Hi, Harry. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you. You don't walk and see that. You don't have a mask on anymore. What's <laughs> we're, going we're on? We're outside. Aww. Do you have a wow. minute to well, chat? Well, we're six feet apart. <laughs> Do you have a minute to chat? Um, I'll do an interview. Okay. As long as it airs on CNN Plus. Oh. Does that still exist? <laughs> yeah. I didn't think so, because the people don't like what you guys are peddling, so, which is propaganda. Thank you. 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 <laughs> 
Wow. Glad someone finally said it. <laughs> Wait, I just, just because I'm, I feel like I'm just, am I going to see now and I, is that the same guy that we just saw on the other show? They no. They look exactly the same. No, different guy, but they're probably being cloned, but he might be a dime store version of that guy. Yeah, they look like the same person. The first, like, ten seconds when you were playing it, I literally thought, that's why I thought it was so brilliant. No. I was like, oh my god, this is a video from six years ago when he was on Fox News. I don't really care about his career. And uh, I'm going to stick with that as my mental uh, construct. That video at the end should tell you all you need to know about CNN or any of its opinion pieces. Hillary Clinton 2024, I'll do you one better. Jimmy Dore 2024. Well, with that being said, we're going to end this segment. And, in de- and again, at the end of the day, don't take your news from CNN. Jimmy Dore 2020. I, I feel like there's there's got to be like a, a genius tagline in there. Like Jimmy Dore 2024, walk right into the White House. There we go. Something like that. All right, folks.